What's going on guys, it's Elias. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about some pretty bad design flaws that the Civic Type R has. Now, before you guys get all uppity on me, I love my Type R. I think the Type R engine and the whole Type R, uh, FKA Type R specifically, is an amazing car. Obviously, I would not be building it into my race car if it weren't. So, let's get that out of the way because I know a lot of you guys are gonna get triggered by what I'm gonna say because as usual, as always, manufacturers have to make a lot of compromises when they're building their vehicles. So we're gonna go over what the compromises are. I mean, these are terrible design flaws in my opinion, but I don't see a real way to get around them in this day and age, unfortunately. So Honda did a great job, fantastic job, Honda. As usual, they make the best engines in the world. However, let's go ahead and go through these horrible design flaws and uh, what I'm trying to do to mitigate what they are. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys Basically what I'm talking about, this is the downpipe with the catalytic converter, this is the intake runner. I've already put gold foil on it to help uh, try to reduce the heat. So this is the intake box and it's, it's all about placement here. I've already talked about this in a previous video, but it's all about placement on where these things go and how they, they interact with each other and where they are in the engine bay. So. Uh, before we get started, actually, uh, do me a big favor, hit that subscribe button down below. A shocking amount of you guys do not subscribe to the channel. It really hurts my channel when you don't subscribe, when you don't watch the videos, you know, and it really desensitizes me from actually making any of these videos. It takes a lot more time for me to uh, make these videos than you guys think, and it also increases my time of uh, finishing the car because I gotta film everything and, and show you guys what I'm doing. I love doing that, but if you guys don't subscribe, uh, there's no reason for me to do it, right? So just let me know if you guys don't like it. I'll stop if I if you do like it I'll continue. All right, let's go ahead and get started Look at how apart all of this is if you guys missed me taking all this apart I, I basically have a few videos of me taking the whole thing apart in preparation for getting all of the aftermarket parts On this type R but since this is all apart. It's easy for me to show exactly what I'm talking about We're gonna go the worst one is the way they cool the exhaust gases right here. So if you are a subscriber, you'll know that I've explained already a few times how this whole thing works. But let's go out through a refresher once again. So there's the intake box that sits right here. It picks up the air right here. It's a pretty good intake box, actually. It does a very good job. And it takes the air and it puts it through here, through the MAF sensor, which is sitting over there. So the MAF sensor sits right here on the intake runner. The intake runner goes over the hot turbo Yes, right, so you see these clips here? That's where the intake runner basically goes. Goes over this and then get, and it installs itself, or when I install the back, to the quote, cold side of the turbo. As you can see, uh, after the cold side of the turbo, uh, it goes through here, it goes down through this pipe, through this charge pipe, goes down through there and into the intercooler, right down there. So the intercooler is right there, plastic runners, Terrible small intercooler goes right through there goes through the back and there's the pipe right there So that's the intercooler pipe goes into there as the intake runner. This is the post intercooler Turbocharged air so high pressure air and it goes right to the back and then gets into the engine that way So now that you guys understand kind of how all of this works Let's figure out what Honda, in my opinion, did wrong. So, like I said, we're gonna start with this right here. This is uh, an integrated turbo uh, manifold, right? So all of the exhaust goes actually through over here. And this is a water-cooled manifold. So one of the biggest problems that these highly turbocharged engines have is dealing with emission laws. They had to integrate the exhaust manifold into the block. So that causes two things. It basically makes a big heat sink out of the block and the block heat soaks like crazy. So this right here where you're looking at where the turbo gets installed is the exhaust manifold. The other thing is they're actually using radiator fluid to cool the exhaust charge. The reason they do that is to reduce NOx emissions, NOx emissions. I hate that they do that. That's a terrible thing that they do. If you're wondering why your car overheats, it's because of that. It's, you can blame the EPA. Just go ahead and blame the EPA. Blame CARB, California, uh, Air Resources Board, California is a whole is a state that we should secede from. In my opinion, we should let them go to be their own country, because their laws are insane. And because of that, um, this is right into the exhaust manifold, and the turbo's right here. So, like I said, all for emissions purposes, 
that creates a ton of heat and that's why I have to spend so much time and money reducing the heat in this engine bay. All right, so as you can see, the turbo is right next to the exhaust manifold. That's actually a good thing. That reduces turbo lag. So that is a good design and it's great that Honda did that. So it's, it spools up this turbo very, very quickly. That's where you get all that super crazy torque that these engines have. Uh, these, all of these small turbocharged engines should have their turbos right next to the manifold because as soon as that exhaust comes out, spools up that spoolie boy and then you get a nice compression into the cold side and then you get more power. That's, that's how you kind of do it. That's, that's a really good way to do it. However, attached to this, is, in my opinion, the worst part of this whole design. Attached to this is the downpipe. So let's take a look at the downpipe right here. And so this is what would install on the turbo. This is the bottom of it. This is right where the turbo is. So as you can see, it's quite large and it's very heavy. Uh, let's get some sunlight in here. Where's the sun? There it is. So as you can see down into it, uh, you can see the catalytic converter. If I can get light into there, there it is. Uh, it's basically a big honeycomb, you know, filter that filters out all kinds of stuff. Uh, it is good, actually. It's good to have that. Uh, all cars that are sold obviously have a catalytic converter. However, catalytic converters only work at a certain temperature range. Uh, and if it gets too hot, it's in trouble. If it gets too cold, it it's, doesn't work well either. So it gets actually super, super hot. It's a, I forget the amount of degrees. I think it's 500 degrees, 400 degrees. It's a very specific range that these, by the way, very expensive catalytic converters. I could probably sell this for four or 500 bucks if I, if I just cut this off and sell the material inside. It's got titanium, palladium, all kinds of exotic materials in there, in there which are horrible to the environment to mine. So no one talks about that, which is neither here nor there. But uh, these are very heavy and they require a ton of heat and a ton of control. So the second reason why they cool the, the charge air is to try to protect this catalytic converter. If they, didn't, if they weren't able to cool that charge air, they'd have to inject a little bit more fuel and it'll run less lean. It'll create less heat, but it'll be less fuel efficient, right? So Honda's smart. They, they know what they're doing with engines. They, they are able to control the exhaust air temperature with radiator fluid. Again, it's good for, for them to be able to pass emissions and sell the car, but as owners, it sucks because of the heat soak. So this right here sits right there. Now let me ask you something. What's right behind here? That's again the engine block. And what's here? This pipe right here is a radiator pipe. So this is the water pump in there. Uh, actually, it's right there. Uh, the radiator pipe goes down through there and basically cooks itself when the, when the catalytic converter is super hot and it stays hot forever. It's designed to be a certain temperature and it's designed to be pretty damn hot. And it's all right here. What sits right in front of it? Well, you don't see it right now, but that's the radiator. The radiator sits right in front of the damn ra uh, catalytic converter. I've covered this in the previous video, but I just wanted to highlight how terrible of a design is. Another thing I did not cover in the previous video is that the slave cylinder, so this right here controls the transmission. The transmission's right there. So this is the transmission, S-D-E-M, whatever it is. This is the slave cylinder right here. So you can see the pipe going in there, that's hydraulic fluid. Guess what, get what let's guess what gets really, really hot uh, when you're running it hard. It's that. So a lot of these Hondas have had issues with that. I think I'm gonna go ahead and shield it with something. I'm gonna install some kind of shielding. I'm probably gonna, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Maybe I'll just put a reflective gold tape on it, see if that'll help. Because honestly, this area right here gets way too hot. It's ridiculous that they do that. Super ridiculous, but they were forced to do it. It wasn't really their choice. I found my boost leak, by the way. It's right there. <laughs> Very interesting. Um, how, anyway, so yes, what I'm doing to mitigate all these problems, and we're not done yet with the problems, is I'm wrapping everything and everything that I can. So I have heat wrap on the hot stuff. I have gold reflective tape on stuff that's designed to stay cold, including the intake box, because the intake box sits right here. Now, as you can imagine, this whole area that we're looking at here gets extremely hot when you're running it. And the intake box having being right here, the heat is coming from this side and it's extremely hot. So I did, a, I did what I can to go ahead and take that, put reflective tape on it, put it, I'm gonna put it in there, it's gonna reduce the temperatures hopefully and reduce the heat soak problem that we have. Another thing is, 
this is not just getting the block hot. Obviously the block gets hot, the engine oil gets hot, but also transmission fluid gets hot. If you're running these things on the track, you better be sure to be changing that transmission fluid uh, religiously. I've changed mine already once. I'm gonna change it again. I'm actually gonna use GM Synchro, Synchro Mesh. So um, you gotta do that constantly because again, this whole area getting this hot is ridiculous. Intake runner gets super hot. It's right over where the hot area is and hot air rises, right? So you're getting a lot of hot air right in this area. It's a terrible design. So like I said, let's take a close look at what I did. So heat reflective tape. So this is how the air box sits there. Uh, it's gonna help protect the heat, protect this from the heat. So I did that, I'm gonna buy more reflective tape. I ran out. I'm gonna cover the rest of this side and uh, under it as well. So you look at that. So I recommend that you do that to mitigate the heat. Uh, I also do definitely recommend uh, taking this big nasty thing out and getting a downpipe like this. This is a PRL downpipe. As you can see, there's a key thing missing and also I've wrapped this thing, right? There's a lot of bungs and holes and things like that that I have to keep available because I'm gonna reinstall the heat shields because that's a, a, also a good thing to mitigate heat. But I also wrapped it just to make sure it doesn't get uh, too hot in there. And uh, I'm trying to avoid that as much as possible. Gold reflective tape, it's gonna go a long way to help the intake runner get stay cold. You know, just wanted to go through these things, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you liked the video, hit the subscribe button, hit that like button, guys, I truly appreciate it. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.